It is truly my honor, and I'm um, very much humbled to be a part of this conversation and um, to walk alongside of each of you um, as we move closer towards our, our goal of real equity and justice, um, and particularly at a time in which this country and this world is in desperate need of um, real collaboration and bringing people together. And so to be able to be a part of this women's Economic Power Agenda Summit hosted by Women Employed, I am again truly honored. Um, you know, women stand as the backbones of our community, you know, providing care and support and innovation and inspiration, all of the shared knowledge and so much more. Um, and yet our city and our country have a long history of disparities and injustices, especially among women of different races. And I'm sure that many of you here have personally been impacted by um, the type of injustice that unfortunately has been the prevailing form of, of too many um, of our institutions. And women face many barriers, including gender wage gap, you know, uncompensated care work, the child care crisis, student debt, unfair hiring practices, um, the fact that we don't get enough opportunities or the opportunities that are available don't go for advancement, um, don't go to women. I mean, these are just some of the, um, the, the barriers that women have had to face over the course of now decades and generations. And these inequalities and barriers um, limit the opportunities for women and often causing many women to miss out on um, the, 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 the ability to be able to care uh, for your families, but to express your talents, the invaluable talents that you have, the ideas um, that women have in order to move our city and our systems forward. From day one, my administration has been committed to gender equity, strengthening women's economic power in our city and well beyond. We have worked to eliminate sub-minimum wages. We increase paid time off benefits, support the hard work of many people on this call to restore economic corridors across the city. And we're just getting started. Uh, believe it or not, it's only been six months, but you know, now more than ever, we are seeing women taking leadership roles in government and companies, opening organizations and businesses that uplift and empower our community and working to improve conditions again in our city and beyond. And while we are continuing to see an increase in women in leadership and economic power, there's still so much more work to do. And that is why events like this are so important. It gives women in leadership the opportunity to come together to network, to discuss, all of the challenges that you are facing, but most importantly, coming up with the ideas, new ideas and innovative ways to overcome these challenges. It is also clear that your shared experiences and the ability to engage with like-minded organizations and businesses and to collaborate, this is what is needed to drive the necessary advancement for economic equity for women. And know that you have the full force of my administration to work alongside of you. Together, we can create an equal as well as a just city for us all. And every person that wants the opportunity to serve and to lead that we, and succeed, that we do everything in our power to see um, those hopes and aspirations come into fruition. So I'm committed to building a better, stronger, safer Chicago. And we can't do that without the leadership of women. And know that within my own administration, I'm grateful to have some very powerful women leading us um, during these, this, this unique progressive time from my first deputy chief of staff to deputy mayors to policy uh, to budget, um, well across this administration, um, the leadership of women are on full display um, and know that my wife and I are, are tremendously humbled and of you all's dedication and leadership. And I will say this, you know, I just think it's important that you all at least hear this little last story. When I became a Cook County Commissioner, my daughter Braden, I believe she was about five years old, five years old at the time, barely five, because a year in she started kindergarten, and I was getting um, ready for for work to come down to the county building, and I was putting on my suit, and my children knew that if I'm putting on my suit, I'm going to work because that's not how I normally dress, right? And so my daughter said, so you're going to the county board today? I said, yes, dad. And she said, um, is the boss going to be there? And I said, well, who's the boss? 
She said the woman with the blue suit, she was referring to President Preckwinkle. And so my daughter is being raised in a generation where she understands and knows that when dad goes to work, he still reports to a black woman. So congratulations to you all. We're looking forward to the work that we're going to do together.